Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. This is going to be amazing because I literally just a couple of days ago was talking about this exact, these exact same verses. Romans 8.34, who is even at the right hand of God? Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us? Who is he who condemns? Well, none of us can condemn. We can mark and avoid. We can judge with a right judgment. We can't condemn. It is the Lord who does all those things because he's the one who has earned the right to do it by his sacrifice on the cross. Let's read this in context. Start here in verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. That would be us to believe. For whom he foreknew, and this is interesting, for whom he foreknew, remember the Bible says elsewhere that he knew us uh, from eternity past. He's been here since, since that time, knew who we were long before any of this existed. This, and that, that's, that's weird to me. How, how could he have known us? What did he know about us? What were we? I've mentioned this before. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, a lot of people take that verse to say that, that I can, I'm automatically saved if, the, if I'm predestined. No, that's not automatic salvation. You're predestined to be saved, but you still have to say yes. You still have a process of repentance, a process of sanctification, a baptism to go through, all these things that normal Christians do in normal life because the Lord commanded them. We still have to do all that. You're not automatically saved because of this predestined thing. A lot of people misunderstand this. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. If we're predestined and we're all automatically saved, why do we need to be called? If we're already predestined to be saved, why do we need to be called? Because he has to call us to him because we don't know him. These he also called, whom he called, these he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. Amazing. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? That's what's waiting for us. Us who believe, that's what's waiting. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. And a lot of people love to do that. They love to go out of their way to bring a charge against other people. Now, if somebody's wrong, they're wrong. Call it out. State it. Rebuke it the proper way. Deal with it in a proper way. And then if, they, if they're not willing to change, then you mark and avoid and move on with your life. Don't worry about it. But who can bring a charge against God's elect people? Is it God who ju it is God who justifies? Who is He who condemns? How, how can we condemn anybody? I can I can sit there and look at a person's actions and look at their doctors and look at what they're doing and they're like, hey, you got an issue. You need to change this. Or if it's demonic enough, just call it out for what it is, and say, how can you have salvation if this is what you're doing? Pose the question. Who is he who condemns? But I'm not allowed to condemn anybody. I don't know what the Lord's doing in their heart. It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Jesus is the one that has the control. Verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? That's none of the above. <laughs> as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. If they threaten you with death, if they hold the knife to your throat, if they point the gun at you, thank them. Freak them out. I thank you for what you're about to do, and I forgive you. What do you mean you're thanking me? You're sending me home to be with my Lord. Thank you. I forgive you. And may the Lord not hold this sin against you.
They got enough going on. <laughs> Better that they get. You know what? And that type of attitude, that type of response can be the difference between that person getting saved and turning to repentance, turning to the Lord. It's happened in the past. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that includes you. You can't separate yourself from him. He won't allow it. I can't sin my way out of salvation. I can't stumble enough. Because if nothing else can do it, I can't do it either. I don't have that ability. I don't have that power. If I'm his, I'm his. That's it. And he will keep me there. So we can have full assurance of our salvation. Full assurance of who we walk with. He who was once despised and rejected of men now occupies the honorable position of a beloved and honored son. The right hand of God is the place of majesty and favor. <coughs> Our Lord Jesus is his people's representative. When he died for them, they had rest. He rose again for them. They had liberty. When he sat down at the Father's right hand, they had favor and honor and dignity. The raising and elevation of Christ is the elevation, the acceptance, and enshrinement, the glorifying of all his people, for he is their head and representative. Jesus is the head of the church, Ephesians 5. This sitting at the right hand of God, then, is to be viewed as the acceptance of the person of the surety, the reception of the representative, and therefore the acceptance of our souls. If Jesus is accepted, we are accepted. Because he's our representative. O saint, see in this thy sure freedom from condemnation. Who is he that condemneth? Who shall condemn the men who are in Jesus at the right hand of God? Guys, we are seated in heavenly places. You may not be able to perceive it, but that's what the Bible says. I believe it. How are we seated in heavenly places? Because Jesus Christ, our representative, our Lord, our Messiah, is seated in heavenly places. And since he is our representative, and all who believe are in Christ, we're there with him. Again, we can't perceive it, but we know it's true because the Bible tells us it's true. The right hand is the place of power. Christ, at the right hand of God, hath all power in heaven and in earth. Who shall fight against the people who have such power vested in their captain? O oh, my soul, what can destroy thee if omnipotence be thy helper? If the aegis of the Almighty cover thee, what sword can smite thee? Rest thou secure, if Jesus is thine all-prevailing king, and hath trodden thine enemies beneath his feet. If sin, death, and hell are all vanquished by him, and thou art represented in him, by no possibility canst thou be destroyed. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We are not subject to wrath. And so all this nonsense that you hear being spewed out there, it comes from a severe lack of understanding of the scriptures and a severe lack of faith in the word of God and what he said was going to happen. They can't explain those verses. They can't get away from that truth. And so they attack us because we do believe it. They hate us because we see what he's saying and accept it and are putting our hope in it. And so if they want to do that stuff, they can do that. The Lord is watching. But we don't have to believe what they say. We don't have to put up with it. We don't have to sit there and try to honor them by listening to that nonsense. We know the truth. And when they come and they start to spew that, I say, well, that's not what the Bible says. I believe what the Bible says. So what you're speaking is not true. You turn around, turn your back to them, walk away. You don't have to give them audience. They were trying to do that for me a couple years ago. There was a bunch of channels that were trying to get me to come do a live stream with them. I said, why? Why would I do a live stream with you? I went on one guy's live stream, not in the, in the call or in the video. I went into his chat. And I don't know, for some reason, he made me a moderator. So everybody that was in the chat talking trash, I blocked them all. So that just me and him could talk. 
And I, and he, he said, come on on, come on in. I was like, why would I, why would I put myself into a situation where you're going to call friends and have them come on and all of you are going to browbeat me thinking that you're wearing me down with false doctrine and false understandings that, and, and why would I put myself in a, in a place where I have no business being? You don't want to debate. You want to argue and condemn and you want to insult. I told him, I said, you're a high school bully. You have no interest in the truth. So why am I going to waste my time showing you something that you have no interest in? There are people out there all around the world that need to hear the truth. I'm going to go talk to them. Why would I waste my time talking to you when I already know you're going to call three people and they're going to come in and then everybody's going to gang up on me. And it will turn, it won't be a debate about truth because you're not interested in that. It will be you guys trying to shame me and make me look bad. And it's just high school bully BS. I, I'm, I was chatting this to him in his, in his live chat. I said, so I'm not going to waste my time. I'm not going to spend hours. And he even dedicated a whole website to me. It was really funny. But I told him, I was like, I was like, you keep doing what you're doing. Because he, he was like, so you're going to get mad because I'm, I'm going to do this? I was like, no, by all means, keep doing it. He said, because you and everybody else that's like you, you guys are free advertisement for my channel. And you're going out there and you're telling people about me and you're taking video clips about me and you're talking about me and making websites about me. I don't know why he would waste his money doing that. So, but you guys are giving me free advertisement because not everybody that follows you will come to my channel, but the ones that do will get to hear the actual truth. And it just may be that it wins them over and, and they see the error of the way of following you and doing things your way, but instead go and read the Bible and believe what the Lord said. Is it so please keep going because you're giving me free advertisement. And sending hordes of people to my channel to actually hear what the Bible really says. And I could hear in his voice that he didn't he hadn't thought about that and, and he got he was became became very disappointed and he got real quiet. I was like, so so by all means, and anybody in this, anybody that's watching this, I was like, by all means, go to my channel, clip my stuff, share it everywhere you can, try to make me look bad. Because the Lord's gonna use that to bring people to my channel to hear the real truth because that's what they've been looking for. And you're just doing, the, you're doing them a favor by sending them over. And then I left his chat and I didn't talk to him anymore. He tried to get me to come in there a couple of times. I was like, nope. He even had some of his people subscribe to my channel and, and link, hey, he's talking about you again. I said, look, I told you guys, I don't want to know anything about that. Don't send me links to that. I don't care. And so I started blocking people that were sending me links. So if you send me a link, I'm going to block you. Don't send me any more links. I don't care what they say. You're on their side if you're doing that because you're looking for drama. Get out of here. There's no, there's no need for that anymore. There's no need to sit there and debate somebody who isn't interested in that stuff because what they're doing is exactly what Romans 8 is talking about. They're condemning. They're bringing a charge against God's elect people. And they're no more Christian than an atheist is because, and I can say that with boldness, because everything that they're doing is directly opposite. And, and the people will say, well, but they've done these things. They're doing all these things. Yeah. Satan shows himself as a being of light. It's no wonder his ministers do too. So when you look at them, oh, look, that's a Christian. Oh, look, that's a pastor. Oh, look, that's this, that's that. They show themselves as being of light. And inside is emptiness and darkness. <coughs> We don't have to put up with that because we're a chosen group, a chosen race. We're, 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 put, we're brought in by adoption to the, to the family of God. The best thing that we can do in situations like that when people are saying that stuff is ignore them. And if we must speak, we speak with boldness and we speak with truth and we speak with as few words as possible. If I even thought for one second... And you and, and you can tell somebody this if they if, if they're one of those types of people. If I if you tell them if I even thought for one second you would even begin to be adult about this, I might consider actually sitting down and going verse for verse with you to see what you think and show you what the Bible really says. But I know for a fact that's not what you're doing, and so I'm not interested in talking to you. And when they say you're scared, you're scared. Yeah, you're right. I am scared for you and your eternal life that's waiting for you on the other side because right now it's darkness. So yeah, I'm scared for you. 
You desperately need to repent. You desperately need to turn to the Lord, read the book, believe what it says, and stop attacking Christians with it. Because if you're using it as a weapon against believers, you're using it wrong. And you're not on God's side. You're an enemy of God. Tell them the truth. And then turn your back and walk away. They'll figure it out. If they don't, they weren't meant to. Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to wear you out. They're trying to get all of us distracted and get us pulled in different directions and wear us down. That's what they were doing to Jesse, Diamond Dustification. He still puts videos up every now and then, but it really wore him down. The way people were acting towards each other, how they were commenting, how they were taking the word of God out of context, and they would draw him into those things. And, I, and one time I warned him, I was like, Jesse, I said, I know you're going to do what you want to do, but be careful because all these guys are trying to do is wear you down so that you'll give up. That's that's it. That's all it is. After five years of telling the truth, they still don't believe. They're still out there looking for other targets. I don't give them the time of day. Unless I see some genuine repentance in your actions and in your words, I'm not interested. But they're the ones that are causing the problems in the church. See, our enemy isn't outside the church. Our enemy is within the church. They're trying to bring the church down from the inside by pulling the supports out. So they're trying to bring down our, our good leaders, our good teachers. They're trying to bring down our watchmen. They're trying to bring down everybody they can. That's the whole point of all this, to wear us out. Can't let them have your energy. Don't let them have your joy. Don't let them have your peace. That peace that defies all understanding that he has given to me, it's mine. I'm keeping it with myself. I will only share it if I go somewhere and think that it's, it's worth sharing it there. My joy, my joy inexpressible, I'm keeping that to me. Until I find a, pl a location that I'm going to where it's a godly location, then I'll share my joy. I'm going to be stingy with it because I'm not going to waste it somewhere. And what did the Lord say to do? Shake the dust off your clothes and off your shoes and let that be a testimony against him. I've done that twice. They have no right to condemn us. They have no right to put a charge against us. No right to judge us unfairly. Or to use the sword of the Lord, the, the word, as a weapon against us and beat us over the head with it. They have no right to do that. That's not what that was intent, intended for. It was intended to bring hope, encouragement, and strength to the believers. And it was intended to bring repentance and a knowledge of the gospel to the outside world. So that they could come into the sheepfold as well. That's what it was intended for. And that's not what people are using it for. They use it to sell books. They use it to promote everything short of pornography. They use it for anything and everything they can. It's not right. Because our Lord sits at the right hand of God. He makes intercession for us, but he also sees all these things that are being done. You don't think he's making notes on that? You don't think he's going to come back and take his revenge out on those people who refuse to repent? That are using his word against his chosen? against his church of course he is they will be marked out they will be separated out and they will be left here when the rapture happens and the lord takes his church away they will be left here and they will suffer more than anybody but it'll be at their own hand and by their own words self-condemnation the lord jesus sits on his throne alive and well at this very second we can know that for sure because that's what the bible tells us we can walk in faith in that and in trusting in him. We don't have to doubt. We don't have to question. We don't have to wonder. We can know beyond a shadow of a doubt. And again, it comes down to that same question. Do we believe? Do we believe the word of God? Do we believe the Bible in front of us? I do. And I want to continue believing. I want to believe more than anything. So Lord... As you listen to our prayer tonight, make us to believe. Help our unbelief. We believe, but we want to believe more. Help our unbelief. Help our doubts and our fears. Help our questions. And help us with these people that are trying to bring us down from the inside. That the outside world, when they come and they see, all they see is what's on TV. And it's such a travesty and such a terrible example because it's not Christian. They see the craziness. They see people standing there 
uh, throwing their hands up in the air, shouting "Shabala, Dabala, Ramalama, Ding Dong," and they're like, "This is nuts! These people are crazy! This is, what's wrong with this?" A lot of people are, are supporting that gibberish stuff, but there's no interpreter. Where's the interpreter? Not a single person in history has ever interpreted that. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, they justify that stuff. And that's what the outside world sees? No. They think they're nuts. They see this other stuff and all these scandals they got going on. They just had one here recently. And everybody's talking about it to get their views and clicks and get their ad revenue. And it's all fake. It's all a put-up deal. Because within a month, both of those individuals are going to put out books. And people are going to go run to buy them books and read them. It was just, it was, it was a, it was a sham. It was a show. They just put it up for nothing and it'll all go back to normal in a month, month and a half. And then everybody's going to buy the book and get suckered in just like everybody that was sitting at that conference. They should have all got up and walked out. But, well, what can we do? We are but a small voice as the remnant. So here's what we do. We don't look at that. We don't pay attention to all that stuff. That's for worldlings. That's for earthlings. We are citizens of heaven. We pay attention to our Lord seated on his throne. We pay attention to his word and what he wants us to do. And so we can ignore that stuff and focus on him. Because he is our Lord. Lord, we, you are our Lord. Make us to pay attention to you, to look up to you, to not worry about what's going on here, to not focus on these nonsense things that these people are doing in the name of Christianity. Because you get no glory from it. They don't bother to pause and say, you know, we're, we're not worried about this. It's, it's, we're here for the glory of the Lord. Let us do that instead. That They completely ignore you and take no counsel from you. Lord, may we take your counsel. May we take your word and apply it and do it to the best of our ability. May we walk that narrow path as best we can. Because right now it looks like a lot of people are falling away. A lot of people are abandoning the faith and you told us that was going to happen. A great many people would abandon the faith. It's happening at a terribly high rate. Lord, have mercy on our souls. Have mercy on your people. Have mercy on your church. Strengthen us to keep going. Make us to stand bold and strong in the truth. Make us to become more familiar with your word and that the Holy Spirit would call up anything that we need at any time when spoken to, whether it's to be silent or to speak words that will have effect. Words that will shut down arguments and to be able to share verses back to back, rapid fire, to shut down even the boldest enemy. Most of all, Lord, make us to have peace and have joy and to wait and look for your will to be done concerning all these things and concerning us. We know the time is close. There's a lot happening around the world. Make us not to use that as an opportunity to be scared, but instead look up and know that the time is nigh because that's what you said was going to be happening. You literally told us what to watch for and it's here and it's been here for quite a while now. And so all the timing matches, everything matches up. And so we even have it where what they're trying to do is marking out the exact time by their actions. They are showing us that you are near. Lord, I pray and we pray that you come quickly. Come quickly, Lord. Come quickly and take your church. And then we were, we can return and take your kingdom. But come quickly, Lord. We ever wait and watch and eagerly expect you at any moment. Because this world can have itself. We don't want to part, be a part of that. We want to go and be where you are. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers, and thank you for your mercy and your grace, your beautiful love, and this amazing free gift of salvation. Thank you for making intercession for us. We sure need it every day. In your name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for Evening Devotion. It is really, it is really terrible to witness what's called Christianity today out there in the forefront of this, that, that that's the example being set. And that's what people see. And when they see that, they see no difference between Christians and the rest of the world. No difference. And they should see a stark contrast between who we are and who the rest of the world is. And yet they don't. Well, we can do that individually in our own lives. And since we do, what does that bring us? It brings attacks. People look down on us. People talk down to us. 
He will avoid us. We should be different. We're not citizens of the earth. We're citizens of heaven. We're not earth dwellers anymore. We are born again into a righteous family, the family of God. Let us act like it as sons and daughters of God. Let us act like it and be the people he's making us to be. Not to hide it, but to show it. Let our light shine. Be salt of the earth. They can talk all they want. It's irrelevant. We're watching for Jesus, not them. They're trying to distract everybody. If you ever pay attention and notice, they're literally trying to distract everybody away from the Bible and away from what, all the important things that are happening and get everybody looking over here so they're not paying attention. All the more we need to be looking at the book and paying attention and looking at him. Then we won't get caught up in that stuff. Then that won't become our focus. Because it is the Lord that sits at the right hand of God. And since we're in Christ, we sit with him. Believe it. That's what the Bible says. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.